What is IoT role in the fourth industrial revolution? Well, let's ask Jeff Winter, industrial IoT expert and digital transformation enthusiast. So Jeff will not introduce himself as such, but he is the number one industry 4.0 influencer out there, and for good reasons. Not only his experience is vast and deep, but his insights are always on point. If you don't trust me, go check him out on LinkedIn, watch his videos, read his articles. You will never be disappointed with Jeff. To answer the question, we will discuss what's specific to the industrial part of industrial IoT or IIoT, IoT's level of maturity, and the common reasons why industrial IoT projects still hit the wall, and more topics. A little hint for today, IoT is core and critical to Industry 4.0. Hi everyone, this is the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. Today we will talk about Industry 4.0 and for that we have the Jeff Winter. Jeff, how are you? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here. This will be fun. Yeah, so Jeff, you are one of the people who talk talks a lot about Industry 4.0 out there. You have, we'll talk about that real quick, about you know your background and how you came to that. Um, so you're visible. So people watching this video, if you don't follow Jeff, you know, go and check him out because he has lots of very interesting things to share about Industry 4.0. Jeff, for people who don't know you, who are you? What are you doing these days? <laughs> so, yes, my name is Jeff Winter. And for my job, I'm Senior Director of Industry Strategy for Manufacturing with Hitachi Solutions. And what that basically means is I help point my company in the right direction to be a world-class digital transformation solution provider. And so in order to be successful at that, I have to be intimately involved with what's happening in the industry. And that's why I participate in so many academic groups, industry associations, advisory boards, and research teams to stay current on the latest and greatest. And yes, I do a lot of LinkedIn posting, article writing, podcasts, and speaking at conference to help stay current on what's happening in the industry. Yeah. Uh, one doesn't improvise himself, you know, knowledgeable or influencer in a domain as vast and deep as Industry 4.0. So how did you come to become the Jeff Winter we know today? <laughs> it's kind of a funny story because in 2018, I didn't even know what Industry 4.0 was. I was actually a safety, an industrial safety, if you want to call it, thought leader and expert. And I was assigned Industry 4.0 as part of a promotional path for the company I was working for at the time. So by December of 2018, I had to figure out what Industry 4.0 was. And if you actually look back and scroll back on my hundreds and hundreds of LinkedIn posts, my very first post when I started that journey is, what is Industry 4.0? Because I didn't know myself. So I took it upon myself to join associations, read books, take classes to submerse myself in this very nebulous, difficult to explain world. Instead of focusing on being the technical expert on all the different technologies out there, I focused on how they're all united and work together to transform the way that companies operate. And I had fun along the way and got kind of well known as part of the journey. Yeah, and you're doing a great job at explaining, democratizing, explaining the trends you're seeing as well. Um, I like the way you're you're decompiling some of these analysis that some people or companies publish out there. It's pretty cool. So once again, people go go follow Jeff because he has lots to teach you. So we have an audience very much biased towards IoT topic. They are technical people doing embedded, doing integration into cloud infrastructure, things like that. So you, you just told me that you know you learned what Industry 4.0 is, and now you've been talking about it for a long time. But here's my challenge. How would you describe Industry 4.0 to someone who's in IoT, and how does IoT fit in Industry 4.0? You have 10 seconds. No, kidding. Just <laughs> that would be a good challenge. That would be a good one, right? <laughs> so... Industry 4.0, which is essentially the nickname given to the fourth industrial revolution, basically describes the, the era or the time that we're living in right now. It describes the revolution that's happening within the industrial world. And this revolution is characterized by the fusion of technologies that's kind of blurring the lines between the physical, the digital, and even the biological worlds to completely change the way that companies operate, the way that people work, the way that we behave as consumers, and even the way that we live. 
Now, Industry 3.0, the nickname given to the last industrial revolution, is primarily focused on automating and digitizing production processes through the development of the computer and the internet. And this revolution mainly took place in the late 60s and 70s, and that era was defined by the shift from mechanical and analog electronic technology to digital electronics. Now, one thing most people forget or don't realize is Industry 4.0 expands beyond the traditional production environment to encompass all the elements that make up the whole value chain, integrating supply chain, engineering, quality control, procurement, customer service, basically everything from sourcing all the way through to servicing a customer. And that's why the Industry 4.0 market and, and concept is such a big topic because it's just it's a lot larger than Industry 3.0. We even seen concepts like manufacturing 4.0, supply chain 4.0, EHS 4.0, quality 4.0, maintenance 4.0, you name it. All subsets of that broader industry 4.0 playing off the same 4.0 nomenclature. Now, I would argue that IoT is one of, if not the fundamental technology that enables this industry 4.0 revolution to take place. It's what allows everything to, to connect together. And according to IoT Analytics last year, there are an estimated 16.7 billion connected IoT devices out there. And that doesn't even include laptops and cell phones. And it's these devices that are creating an unprecedented revolution in data generation. And most of all the other disruptive technologies out there, AI, digital twin, cloud computing, um, one form or another, they take advantage of all this data that we're generating, which according to Statista, we're expected to generate a whopping 147 zettabytes worth of data this year alone. And nice. to put that uh, in you know, comparison, that's 147 trillion gigabytes, mainly thanks to IoT devices. Yeah, I, I think I read about the fact that this would represent basically in one year, as much data generated by IT devices as data has been produced by the internet since the internet exists. Something like that. It was like as stupid as that. I actually that. have some numbers for that for you. So Eric Schmidt, the former CEO of Google, famously said in 2010 that the amount of data generated since the dawn of civilization up until 2003 was estimated to be five exabytes. 147 zettabytes is roughly 29,500 times the amount of data this year as all of civilization up until 2003. That's crazy. Boom. <laughs> so you gave me, you know, you, you listed a series of terms like something 4.0, right? So there's no such thing as IoT 4.0 yet, but we might get there at some point. But there is a term called industrial IoT, right? And so IoT is a technology that is used in different domains, different industries. and Industrial IoT is, is a term used very much in industrial automation in particular. How is industrial IoT different from IoT from your perspective? Great question. And to start, we need to define IoT. And my favorite definition, there's a lot out there, but my favorite for IoT is one developed by IoT Analytics, the market research firm. And they describe it as the connected physical objects that can exchange data to one or more location, either directly or indirectly via gateways and hubs. And these objects need to be uniquely identifiable and possess the ability to autonomously collect data about their environment. And they even give three rules for what qualifies as IoT and what doesn't. One of them is related to devices that were part of the, the first wave of the internet are not considered IoT, things like computers and smartphones. They talk about how IoT is more than just connection and define that. And they talk about how not all connections are considered IoT. For example, simple passive connections like RFID don't count. Now, the term Internet of Things, I believe, was first used in 1999 by Kevin Ashton to promote RFID technology, coincidentally, but yep. didn't start to reach the masses until about 2014. This means that IoT, I would argue, isn't a technology itself, but more accurately describes a complex ecosystem of technologies. It encompasses the networking of physical devices, vehicles, buildings, and other embedded devices with everything from sensors to software, network connectivity. It's a big mess of things that enable these objects to collect and exchange data. 
And the essence of IoT really lies in its interconnectedness to provide uh, the ability to communicate with each other, with centralized systems, facilitate automation, real-time analytics, and just smarter operations across various different industries and domains. Now, the current conception of the industrial internet of things, or IIoT for short, kind of came out uh, really from the emergence of, I would say, cloud technologies around 2002, which really allowed for the storage of data to examine historical trends within production processes. And this was also further boosted by the development of OPCUA protocol in 2006, which enabled secure remote communications between devices, programs, and other data sources without the need for human intervention or interfaces. Unfortunately, then it took until about 2020 for ISO partnered with ISC, two big standards bodies, to release three IoT standards and technical reports. Then they had the first one, I believe it was 21.823 that specifies the framework for transport interoperability for information exchange. They came out with a second one that describes the concepts and characteristics of technologies for edge computing for IoT systems and applications. And then a third one, it was 3166 specifically for industrial uh, internet of things for their systems and their landscapes. Now, technically speaking, I would say there's very little difference between IoT and IIoT. But here's the way that I really like to distinguish them based on their application. This is the simple way I like to describe it. IoT is outwardly facing mostly driving value through convenience. IIoT is inwardly facing, mostly driving value through efficiency. I like that. Like that, I never really approached uh, the difference this way. I will reuse it. I will quote you, man. It took me a while to come up with that. <laughs> it's brilliant, brilliant, I love that. So we know that the life cycles, development cycles, and then, you know, cycles in terms of devices, equipment, and so on, um, uh, lifespan are, are pretty long in many industry, in particular in, uh, you know, industrial automation. So it requires having very mature technology because when you put some piece of technology somewhere, it's going to be there for the next 10, 20, 30 years, right? The fact that there are different signs in that direction, but I want to have your opinion. The fact that uh, standard bodies are starting to standardize or publish standards about IoT, which is late in the game, by the way, right? 2020 something for IoT uh, in general, in terms of interoperability and so on, which to me is super late. But the fact that standard bodies start caring about having you know these standards published uh, is, is reassuring from the, the perspective of the maturity of the technology. As in, once you have the standards established, it's like, this is like solid, this is not moving, and people will build on top of that, and so you can rely on that. So how mature would you say IoT as a technology, and maybe more particularly industrial IoT is, and it, like, is it usable for the next 50 years, basically, as it, as it is today? Gosh, that's... That's a hard question to answer because of the lack of universal agreement on what's included or not included within the term IoT and whether you consider it a technology or an ecosystem of a bunch of technologies. So, for example, how do you view the IoT tech stack? I mean, you have everything that spans consumer to industrial devices. You have an IoT connectivity layer. You have an IoT middleware layer. You have IoT applications all surrounded by IoT security. And I would say kind of regardless, the Internet of Things is a growing field that's evolving rapidly, but I would argue I still wouldn't consider it fully mature. Okay. Technological maturity is, I would define it as, it's related to a technology stability. It's related to its widespread adoption and the integration into mainstream use, along with the development of an ecosystem to support it standards to support it and best practices. Now, while IoT has seen significant develops, developments and adoption across various different sectors, it's still facing challenges like security concerns and interoperability issues and the development of standards. Like I said, it was only just a couple years ago we saw our first standards on IoT. Therefore, while IoT has matured in many aspects, its full potential and its refinement across all industries are still in progress. And I would say that's indicating it's on a path 
towards maturity, but we haven't fully reached it yet. We're, we're starting to use it. It's being adopted, but it isn't standardized. In fact, concepts like AIoT or artificial intelligence combined with IoT have started to pick up recently, which you know shows that some groups are not even viewing AI and IoT as necessarily separate concepts anymore. So there's still mm-hmm. a lot of ideas that need to be worked out. Yeah. And that's interesting that you're mentioning this like combination of AI and IoT, because my, my follow-up question I understand it's work in progress, right? So we agree on the fact that, you know, I I do claim that IoT has reached some level of maturity as in it's ready for production. That's the way I would state it, right? So it might not be finalized, it might not be written in stone, but it's more than ready for production. Uh, And as a matter of fact, IoT is used today in production at scale, uh, not just in industrial automation or smart buildings that are the most common, you know, um, places where you see them. I see, I see IoT a lot in agriculture. I see it more and more in mining, um, energy, smart grids and things like that. All of that actually now relies on sensors that allow monitoring the environment, taking action and so on. And so it's used. Now, my follow-up question, and once again, the, the um, you know connection with that relationship between AI and IoT is, you know, especially in the industrial world, how do you see IoT being a dependency of other technologies? Are the things that we're seeing as the future or are buzz technologies or are necessary that rely on IoT the same way, you know, your house relies on plumbing and electricity? So are there things that you think cannot really exist without IoT being in the system? It's another hard question because I I don't know that I can think of any technologies that have a one-to-one dependency on this technology cannot function without this technology. But I am pretty sure that all Industry 4.0 technologies at least leverage IoT as a major source of its success. And that is mostly because almost all Industry 4.0 technologies rely on data or rely on connectivity, both which would be accomplished through IoT. So if we think of it that way, in an industrial setting, the technologies that would take advantage of, that's the phrasing I would use, take advantage of IoT would be pretty much everything. Digital twins, artificial intelligence, robotics, cloud computing, edge computing, big data analytics, even additive manufacturing augmented reality, virtual reality, even blockchain could take advantage of IoT. But instead of technologies, I think a better way to look at it is use cases. So IoT Analytics is part of their 2022 Industry 4.0 report. They track the top 15 use cases for smart factory and the top 16 use cases for smart products. And I'm pretty sure all 31 of those in total leverage IoT. I mean, the top use cases like predictive maintenance and remote asset monitoring and uh, um, augmented reality assisted maintenance, factory digital twins, energy management, they, they all depend on IoT for those use cases. Plus, I know of at least five of those use cases that actually had IoT in the title of the use case of those 31. So yeah. if, as I kind of looked through those, I would argue all of them either depend on or leverage IoT in some fashion. So it's, um, you know, what I tell my audience very often, it's a good career choice, like to work in IoT, because it's, you know, it's necessary for many use cases. It's part of many use cases out there. All that said, we are still seeing a lot of IoT projects. And I, I like to actually, it's it's hard to rephrase, but based on the conversation we just had and what you just like shared with me, which is super interesting. So... There's no such thing as an IoT project. There are use cases that use IoT, but the IoT part of these projects, of these use cases, still fail in many cases, right? I'm seeing lots of projects that just end up in a wall because why? I mean, that's a question. What do you see is the main reason or a common reason for IoT projects to fail? In, in industrial context, in use cases, context where IoT is necessary, is core. And so it makes all the thing not work at the end of the day. 
It's a good question. This would get back to part of the reason why I don't think IoT is that mature yet. Because if you compare it to something like the internet or even more specifically Wi-Fi, those are very mature and they're very interoperable. You can take any cell phone, go anywhere in the world and connect to any you know, Wi-Fi as an example. You can't do that with IoT, which is part of the limitation on a success. And despite the clear need, the journey for companies to adopt IoT has been a bumpy ride. Uh, I remember there was a report in 2017 from Cisco indicating a staggering 75% failure rate for IoT projects. But I believe the the tide is turning even in the past several years. Uh, Microsoft last year in 2023 released a digital operations report. And they actually indicated that there's a 14% higher success rate in, in IoT projects compared to just five years ago, which I find encouraging. But on top of just the, the higher success rate, they also showed how the median break even time shrunk from 24 months to 20 months over that same time period. And so not only is the ROI increasing, but at the same time, it's speeding up as to how fast they're able to achieve it. Plus the challenges related to budget availability, project complexity, data management have diminished by about 50%. But as for why projects have been, and will probably continue for a little while to be difficult, the really the main reasons revolving around integrating and interfacing. Those are just the most painful aspects of implementations. I mean, if you start with just compatibility issues, existing OT systems in the industrial world, you know, comprise legacy hardware and software and typically not designed for integration with modern IoT solutions. And so these systems might use proprietary outdated communication protocols, making it difficult to ensure seamless data exchange you know, from old to, to new. Another is the complexity of the integration. Integrating IoT solutions often requires a complex mesh of IT and OT networks, each with mm -hmm. its own specifications, own security requirements, even its own data formats. And bridging these environments demands a, a deep understanding of both domains and can result in an in intricate and oftentimes custom built solution that can be time consuming, or it could just be one that's properly or improperly scoped because of the lack of knowledge. And the last I would say is data management and scalability. Efficiently managing the large volumes of data generated by IoT devices and ensuring the systems can, can scale as more devices come online is another big hurdle. Existing IT systems may not be equipped to handle the increased load leading to performance issues or the need for significant upgrades. Insightful. I was I was expecting you to bring us all these elements very well formulated, uh, understandable. I like that. Thanks a lot, Jeff. We could talk for hours. So we'll stop here. But uh, I think you gave us a very nice insight into uh, what IoT's role is in Industry 4.0 in general. And I hope people appreciate that. Um, well, thanks for your time today, Jeff. Everyone follow Jeff. Over here if you are not following him yet you should he has lots of more interesting even more interesting things to share with you all jeff thanks for your time see you soon bye thanks for having me here